dear students we are doing the topic design of fasteners in that we discuss the types of fasteners one type of semi permanent fasteners is riveted joints now let us continue with the design of riveted joints this lecture is on introduction to riveted joints i dr bilal singh brad associate professor in mechanical engineering yadavindra college of engineering talwandi sabo am presenting this topic the basic part in the riveting is rivet a rivet is a mechanical fastener before being installed a rivet consists of a smooth cylindrical shaft with the head on one end the end opposite to the head is called the tail as shown in the figure on installation the rivet is placed in a punched or drilled hole and the tail is upset or bucked by applying force so that it expands to about 1.5 times the original shaft or shank diameter and hold and this head holds the rivet in place to distinguish between the two ends of the rivet the original head is called factory head and the other deformed head is known as shop head or buck tail riveted joint riveting is a forging process as discussed that may be used to join different parts together by way of a metal part called a rivet as explained in the previous slide figure shows the structure of a bridge made up of made up of riveted joints first let us discuss the advantages of riveted joints production rates are high initial and maintenance costs for the equipment are low either metallic or non metallic materials can be joined dissimilar metals and assemblies even with non uniform thickness of plates can be joined the fastener being a cold headed part has uniform grain structure and has inherent strength of forging unskilled labor can be used to plate equipment the rivet can be made of a variety of materials ranging from soft steel to monal or inconal metals sometimes rivets also act as pivot cam follower or electrical co contact or other functional component now disadvantages of riveted joints parts once fastened can't be easily disassembled the tensile and fatigue strengths of riveted joints are considerably lower than the bolted or welded assemblies joints normally are neither watertight or not airtight protruding rivet heads may be undesirable in food machinery chemical equipment or other sanitary assemblies joints are basically categorized into three categories first wear strength and rigidity are the chief requirements for example coal bunkers low pressure liquid containers bins for bulk materials and ship hulls second along with the strength and rigidity no leakage is also required for example boiler drums high pressure liquid containers and gas tanks third where only strength and rigidity are required for example machine frames building structures and bridges next is methods of riveting riveting consists of inserting a ductile metal rivet through the holes in two or more parts and forming over the heads of the metal rivet so as to secure the parts firmly together in hand riveting the original rivet head is backed up by 
a hammer or a heavy bar as shown in figure a a backing up bar has been used to support the factory head and then the die or the set is placed against the tail end to be headed the die has been placed against the tail and the blows are applied by a hammer this leads to intermediate deformation of the tail head and resulting in the formation of the second head called the point and in this way the two blades have been riveted by a rivet and the joint is complete in the machine riveting the die is part of the hammer which is operated by air hydraulic or steam pressure and during the machine riveting usually the rivets are closed red hot to make them stay better and it also causes the rivets to fill the hole more completely then is the case where in the case of hand riveting we are using percussive actions cold riveting is used when the steel rivets are up to 12 mm in diameter for large diameters hot riveting is used rivet holes are made in the plates or structure members by punching or drilling when the holes are made by punching the holes are not perfect but taper and this requires an additional operation reaming to be done to make the holes accurate to the geometry when the holes are made by drilling the holes are perfect and provide good alignment for driving the rivets the diameter of a rivet hole is made larger than the nominal diameter of the rivet it is 1.5 mm larger than the rivet diameter when the rivet is of diameters less than or at the most equal to 25 mm diameter for rivets having diameters more than 25 mm the rivet hole is larger than the rivet diameter by 2 mm this slide shows the rivet and corresponding rivet hole diameter standard boiler rivets are present in the sizes of 12 14 16 18 20 22 24 24 then a jump of 3 mm 27 30 33 36 39 42 then a jump of 40 6 mm and the rivet diameter is 48 mm when the rivet is die is less than 25 mm rivet hole die is 1.5 mm more than the rivet diameter for rivet dies greater than 25 mm rivet hole die is 2 mm more than the rivet die for example for a 27 mm rivet hole is 27 plus 2 29 mm in diameter these are the standard rivet and rivet hole sizes for boiler the rivets are of different head types and some of them are snap head pan head pan head with tapered neck counter sunk with the round head and counter sunk with the flat head here the standard dimensions of the rivets have been shown in terms of di diameter d of the shank of the rivet mainly snap heads are used for riveting structural members or in machine riveting and when we have the requirement of a smooth flat surface we go for counter head Uh, or counter sink rivet for example in ship building length of rivet shank 
according to indian standards the length of the rivet shank should be total length of the members being riveted plus length of the part of the shank required to form the closing end means total thickness of the members being riveted plus 0.7 to 1.3 times d depending upon the head type this table shows the standard diameters and their preferred lengths in which the rivets are available for example 12 mm diameter rivets are available from length 28 to 80 and 30 mm rivet diameters are available from length 71 to 200 mm so we can select the standard rivets which suits our applications rivet materials rivet materials should be strong and highly ductile indian standard 1960-62 specifies steel rivets for wires usually rivets are made up of wrought iron or soft steel but for corrosive resistance or light weight applications we can go for copper or aluminium alloys the rivet materials can vary from monal or inconal to lead or zinc too this table shows the chemical composition of steel rivets for boilers and their tensile stance steel rivets are available in two grades one and two carbon percentage is 0.2 approximately in both the cases manganese in grade 2 is more 1.3 to 1.7 than 0.6 to 0.9 then silicon sulfur and phosphorus are two are present tensile strength of grade 1 is between 420 to 500 grade 2 is 520 to 620 yield strength in percent of minimum tensile strength is 55 percent for grade 1 50 percent for grade 2 means the allowable tensile uh, or the tensile strength yield strength will be 200 something percentage elongation 25 for grade 1 24 for grade 2 In the slide, we mentioned about monal metal. Let us discuss what monal metal is. It is nickel alloy consisting of nickel and copper main constituents, some amounts of iron, manganese, carbon, and silica. It is stronger than pure nickel and is resistant to corrosion. And it can be used for seawater applications also. In conal, is a registered trademark of special metals corporation it is a super alloy of nickel chromium main constituents and it can sustain extreme environments and high pressures and high heat when heated in conal forms a thick stable passivating oxide layer chromium oxide layer and the surface is now resistant to any scratch or corrosion etc lead is a chemical element with the symbol pp from the latin plumbum and atomic number is 82 it is very heavy metal it is very soft and malleable and has a relatively low melting point so some plates can be riveted together without any damage to them by simply inserting soft lead, hot soft lead, and riveting it together. Freshly cut lead is silvery with the hint of blue. It tarnishes to gray color when exposed to air. Zinc. Zinc is also a chemical element and atomic number is 30. Zinc is slightly brittle and has a blue silvery appearance melting point is 419.5 degrees celsius and zinc is mainly used to prevent the corrosion now different kinds of riveted joints 
two principal kinds of riveted joints are there lap joints and butt joints in the lap lap joints plates to be joined overlap each other a sufficient amount for riveting in butt joints the plates are in the same plane and butt against each other butt joints are connected by a short plate called cover plate or butt steps sometimes we make use of two butt steps one above and another another below the plates to be joined sometimes the outer plate may be narrower than the inner one too these will be shown by figures in the coming slides so different kinds of riveted joints mainly two lap joint and butt joint lap joint has three types single riveted double riveted triple riveted will be explained by figures in the coming slides butt joint with the single cover plate with double cover plates or butt steps double or triple riveted chain or zigzag in case of lap joint in case of butt joint we have single double triple quadruple riveted butt joints double triple or quadruple riveted butt joints can be in the form of chain or zigzag terminology related to riveted joint needs to be discussed first is nominal diameter of rivet this is the nominal diameter of a rivet means the diameter of the cold shank before driving gross diameter of the rivet capital d it is basically the diameter of the hole and is slightly greater than the diameter of the rivet shank as told either 1.5 mm larger than the rivet diameter or 2 mm larger than the rivet diameter as the rivet is heated and driven the rivet fills the hole fully the gross or effective diameter of a rivet means the diameter of the hole or closed rivets strengths of rivets are based on gross diameter next is the rivet line or screw line or back line or gauge line this is the line along which rivets have been placed as shown in the figure this is an imaginary line pitch of rivet is the distance between two consecutive rivets as shown in the figure along the gauge line then pitch of the pivot for structural members it should not be less than 2.5 times the nominal diameter of the rivet hole as a thumb rule usually the pitch for structural members is three times the nominal diameter of the rivets maximum pitch should not exceed 32 times the thickness of the thinner outside plate or 300 mm whichever is gauge distance of rivets or back pitch or transverse pitch back pitch is the distance between two consecutive rivets of adjacent chains as shown the distance between rivet 1 and 2 lying on consecutive gauge lines is shown by back pitch or transverse pitch or gauge distance diagonal pitch it is there in the zigzag riveting and is as shown like this this is a double riveted lap joint with zigzag riveting and in this the side view when we take a cross section say at this position then one of the rivets will be shown at the section plane another rivet will be shown as a hidden lines marginal distance or simply the margin or lap distance is the distance from gauge line to the edge of the plate in this single riveted lap joint this is the gauge line distance from the end of the plate lower plate 
is this is margin similarly for the upper plate this is the edge of the plate and this is the gauge line this is the margin now different types of joints continued this is triple riveted three rows of rivets lap joint chain all the rivets are parallel to each other in each gauge line and this is the second figure is triple riveted lap joint zigzag one of the intermediate gauge lines or the rivets have been staggered in this way and this is known as triple riveted lap joint then is butt joints single riveted butt joint we have two plates a and b which are being joined together a and b we place two cover plates one above one below upper is this plate below one is this plate uh, this plate now we make a row of rivets on both up plates a single row of rivets so this is known as single riveted butt joint here this angle is usually 80 degree this is the second figure is double riveted butt joint chain riveting is done two cover plates have been used as shown in the left figure is double riveted lap joint or double riveted butt joint with the zigzag riveting and the right figure is triple riveted butt joint with two unequal cover plates in this pitch is measured one at the outer row and one rivet is missing alternate rivet is missing in this row inner rows pitch is less but in the calculations pitch p is the outer one rivets on the inner rows pass through three plates and rivets on the outer row pass through the two plates and this is about triple riveted part next is caulking caulking is a process in which the riveted joints are made leak proof and this is done by a blunt tool known as caulking tool caulking tool is 5 mm thick 38 mm wide and has a bevel at an angle of 80 degree this prepares the surface at 80 degree this edge at 80 degree caulking is done at ah bh and also the rivet head around the rivet head at c in caulking process the surface finish is slightly better uh, slightly lower than the fullering process and some damage to the plates takes place then is the fullering process it is similar to caulking a process to make joints leak proof only thing is difference is the tool is tool thickness is equal to the thickness of plate and this process gives more clean surface and there is a less risk of damage to the plates this completes the lecture on different types of riveted joints main course a textbook which has been referred to is a textbook of machine design by sherman and agarwal and some figures have been taken or modified by taking them from different websites for teaching purpose only and the pre the presenter is ac acknowledging the references here thanks